Borderline Regionals just took place with over a thousand Masters players, and somehow Skovitz in Landon Kittler's Arceus Giratina Champion deck was the star of the show. This deck had its best finish in top 32 at EUIC in London, piloted by Pokemon veteran Sami Sekum, with four others joining him in day two. However, the deck has had very little time in the spotlight and has honestly not been respected at all, but I'm guessing that will change after this weekend's win. Arctina had not featured in a tournament since November of 2022, right before Lugia Vistar was released and sent all Giratina Vistar decks to the Lost Zone, waiting in the shadows only to come back in force. Giratina Vistar decks were initially very popular in Japan with the e-block format rotation. However, it slowly dwindled down in popularity compared to the other Lost Zone decks such as Turbo Lost Box, Sable Sard, Kudra or Kyogre variants. However, Arctina was going the opposite way on, and on the rise in usage and popularity, culminating in its win this weekend at Portland Regionals. If you want to support the channel, you can use code TAILMON to get 5% off at Potan Store for your online codes, 10% off for your sealed product at Flipside Gaming, and 20% off for your superfoods at Amaranthi. Or if you're looking to buy singles or sleeves, you can fill up your cart and close the tab, then click on the affiliate link in the description and check out. That way you can support the channel over at TCG Player, Card Market, and Dragon Shield. This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website, PokemonCard.io. The rest of the top 8 featured one Lugia V-Star, piloted by first year master wonder kid, Reagan Retzlaff, three Turbo Lost Box, including EUIC champion Alex Shemansky and top player Grant Manley, along with one Maridon EX and one Mew VMAX. Maybe one of the most surprising things is the most popular deck in the room. Gardevoir EX did not feature at all in top 8. It had 20% of the meta share, 220 decks total, yet none were able to make it. This might be explained by the fact that Lost Box variants were the second most popular deck in the room, but basically on par with Gardevoir EX. Despite Gardevoir EX's power level, Lost Box is arguably one of its worst matchups by far. Lugia Vistar and Mew VMAX were also played in similar numbers to each other. And I think this makes sense, given how Lugia V-Star features a lot of variants with Mesa Goza and capturing Aroma, as well as just feeling inconsistent in general. Whilst Mew VMAX, despite a fantastic showing at EUIC, enters a weird cycle with Drapion V War. When it does well, people will be more inclined to respect it and thus include more answers to it in higher Drapion V counts, plus extra path to the peak counters. When that happens, Mew VMAX gets played less. And all of a sudden, all that extra respect in people's decks doesn't make sense, so it gets dropped. And Mew VMAX rises in power again. I fully expect this cycle to continue until Spiritum with its ability gets released in the next set. This ability stops basic Pokemon V abilities, probably the last nail in the coffin of the long reign of Mew VMAX. Finally, Mirai EX and Kudra Vistar featured a good amount of representation at the event. They are both powerful decks on their own featuring fun strategies like tanking damage or turbo going through the deck. However, neither deck features especially strong matchups against the other top decks. If you didn't watch the stream of day one, watch the magic happen right here. You might have missed this really cool and really amazing play where one player was able to take all six prizes within two turns, utilizing Medicham's Yoga Loop attack. This attack places two damage counters on an opponent's Pokemon, and lets you take an extra turn if it KO at a Pokemon. This allowed Kasten to KO a 260 damage Palkia V Star, get a free turn, and then utilize Urshifu VMAX's G Max Rapid Flow to finish off an Ice Rider Palkia VMAX with 200 damage on it and a B Barrel, closing out the game. As Day 2 started, Lost Box now featured almost 30% of the meta share of Day 2, followed by Lugia V Star, Cardivore EX, and Mew VMAX. However, this is where Arctina starts showing signs of what was about to come, with seven of those decks making it through and of course ultimately winning the event. I must admit, I tried Arctina and wasn't a firm believer in the deck after playing with it, but I think I now know why. I was trying to do too much with it, adding Drapion V to help with Mew VMAX, and also flying Pikachu VMAX as an anti loss box measure. But turns out, simple is better, and as we can see from Landon's deck, Simple is better. It's very straightforward. It's only focused on Arceus and Giratina. It's trying to disrupt as much as possible with four paths to a peak. 
and it has the B Barrel and Skullvet for support, but that's it, nothing else, no more shenanigans, just pure beatdown. This cute little Pokemon's ability, Nest Stash, synergizes really well with Beaverl, putting your hand at the bottom and cleaning it up so you can draw extra cards with Industrious and Scissors. However, no one, and I mean absolutely no one, would ever expect the absolute craziness that we witnessed on stream. Not once, but twice during the same match, Nest Stash was Landon's one and only option to turn around an otherwise bleak situation, and with no Beaverl set up, and the odds against them, they were able to draw the right Pokemon V-Star in order to take a commanding lead in games 1 and games 3 of top 4 against Grant Manley. Just watch the craziness happen right here. To the active Giratina V, I don't think there's a supporter card in hand, there's just a Squilbit. We might see the Nest Stash. Doesn't grab the Arceus V in the deck, so it's oh really just goodness. relying on Nest Stash here. One card, Jeremy, one card. It needs to be a supporter card or a Giratina V-Star. All right, you shuffle your hand, put it to the bottom, draw one card. Oh, oh no way! Giratina V-Star taking the knockout on Dragonite. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> the Giratina V-Star KO completely changed the game as Grant was stuck with very few options to respond at that point with no attacker able to deal a 1KO on Giratina V-Star. Top that off, with Landon drawing an energy of the prizes, that meant a follow-up attack for them next turn as well. And when you think something as crazy as that can't happen again. Impossible, right? Just watch this other moment in Game 3. It's gonna shuffle the hand. I mean, personally, I'd be looking for a professor's research, but that's just me. Arceus V-Star. Yeah, that's good. a good one too. Yeah. Alright, one card, what's it gonna be? Oh kidding? my gosh! Arceus V-Star off the top of the deck. If there's one thing Squovet is good at finding, it's V-Star Pokemon. Drawing the Arceus V-Star means Landon went from possibly powering up more energy onto the board to taking a KO in Cramorant and fully setting up their board and taking once again a commanding lead. The final match unfortunately was pretty one-sided as Regan joshed themselves into a pretty devastating hand that led to him completely breaking and losing another final with Lugia V-Star this season after OCIC in February against Azul. As Reagan very eloquently put it himself, he flew high with Lugia, but it wasn't quite high enough. Portland is only a second official TPCI event of the season featuring the new E-Block standard, though we did also have a regional in Sao Paulo and a TPC regional in Singapore, which was, coincidentally, also won by Arctina. I'll be featuring specific deck profiles and gameplay of the top 8 decks of this weekend's events throughout this week, so make sure you stay tuned to the channel as we head into the final stretch of the season. There are quite a few events still to go all around the world, so there's non-stop Pokemon action coming your way right here. I want to give a special shout out in this video to the Tableman subscribers, who go out of their way to support my content. Dragon Hero 990 Dorian Rodriguez, Potterhead360, Mr. Proto, Barkas247, Darius Patel, Matthew Thanders, thank you so so much for your support. If you have enjoyed the video so far and found the information useful, please consider becoming a Table 1 channel member through the join button down below. For as low as $1.99 a month, you can help support the creation of these videos. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't yet, and leave a comment if you found it useful or if you think there's something I overlooked. Until next time, 